Every civilization was built off the back of a disposable workforce. But I can only make so many. Hi folks, I'm Ignaty Vishnevetsky. And I'm Alex Dowd. Today we are talking about one of the most hyped film releases of the year, one of the most uh, hyped in recent memory, and that is Blade Runner 2049. Welcome to Film Club. <laughs> So Blade Runner, Ridley Scott's masterpiece, released 35 well, alien, years ago. Maybe, but I think it's Blade Runner. You think it's Blade Runner? I think okay. it's Blade Runner. 1982, <laughs> fantastic fusion of classic sci-fi themes and sort of reworked noir atmosphere and a whole lot of smoke, haze, and <laughs> fog and rain. darkness and rain. Yeah. A very murky, unreadable movie with a famously ambiguous conclusion, at least if we're talking about the later director's cuts. <laughs> Making a sequel to Blade Runner sounds like a terrible idea mm -hmm. because the ending of the definitive versions of Blade Runner poses a question that we all like talking about, but we don't actually want answered. And now we have a sequel, Blade Runner 2049, which mm -hmm. actually, surprisingly, figures out a way to uh, keep that question open without uh, dragging its feet you yes. could say. Um, this time around, you've got Ryan Gosling playing another Los Angeles Blade Runner, mm -hmm. which is to say a cop who hunts replicants. Replicants are androids, I guess. They're really not robot-like, which is sort of the point, and especially here, that there's not, there are not a whole lot of rules for what distinguish these things from actual human beings. Mm -hmm. Harrison Ford played a uh, someone in the same, working the same job in the original film, he returns as character Deckard here. Yes. Now, I, in a lot of ways, I think that this is a movie that depends on your memories and affection for the original Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. So much of its power, I think, relates to uh, our, how we've grappled with that film over the years, over the last 35 years. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I think it's a very different movie than the original Blade Runner. It's even a very different looking movie. Yes. Because this time around, you've got Denis Villeneuve, who directed Arrival, mm -hmm. Sicario, but before that, uh, was was better known as a, as a as a Quebecois art house director. He's yes. kind of re reinvented himself as a genre filmmaker. He has a very clean minimalist style. He's working here with Roger Deakins, a guy with a really practical kind of lighting style. And by the way, this I mean, from a purely visual standpoint, this <laughs> might be the movie of the year. I mean, in terms of just one image after another, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous film. Really, I mean, I love the production design, but I actually have to say, I think really? watching this film is like, how much how much better would this look if someone who is more interested in haze and atmosphere than Deakins? Deakins is a great cinematographer, yeah. but he has such a clean, crisp style. Sure. So, someone with a little little bit more of a, of a tantalizing, almost erotic style. <laughs> uh, well, but I mean, I think, I think on some level, can't you appreciate this, it, that this isn't just trying to be at the same time, yeah, a carbon copy of the first film, you know? Even as it does repeatedly copy the first film, yes. but in a way that sort of creates these interesting echoes. I think from a technical standpoint, this thing is pretty immaculate, mm -hmm. and I, I could watch it again right now and, and just sort of luxuriate over those images, and, and although I will say the sound design is a little is a little much at times. It definitely well, has watch that it in one of those Zimmer. theaters where it is way Boom. too, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, they basically take that iconic score from the original and just kind of drown just, and it. Just, put, just, just up the bass, just up yes, the bass yeah, on yeah, yeah. it. But I think my, if I have an issue with the film, and I think, I think in general, I think it's a very, they've sort of made this pretty interesting three hour art movie in the Blade Runner universe. I think my main issue with it is that the first film sort of gives you uh, it's it's interesting in its world building because I think that it it has a kind of less is more perspective. It gives you a tiny little glimpse of the Blade Runner future and then lets your imagination fill the rest in. This this movie takes us out of Los Angeles. It shows us other sort of corners of the Blade Runner future, but I don't think that what it shows us is as interesting as what's implied in the sort of uh, negative space of the original. Your story isn't over yet. There's still a page left. 